White anxiety is on the rise in Trump's America. Hello everyone, this is Mr. Obvious, bringing you the obvious, and today on thestar.com. In Trump's America, white anxiety, and a president ready to address it. This article is by Emily Badger of the New York Times and Nate Cohn. Now, it's very clear that the left, especially the left, celebrates white people being wiped out, being made a minority. They celebrate, they say, The time for the whites are over. Our future belongs to minorities. And they say all this other insane stuff. Forgetting the fact that, you know, forgetting the culture, forgetting the heritage, and forgetting all of the accomplishments that this group of people have achieved. Just a reminder before we get into this, you can find my Patreon and Subscribe Star links down below in the description. Be sure to check out my affiliate link as well as my social media and follow me on BitChute. Two forces convulsing American politics found each other at President Donald Trump's rally in North Carolina this week. A sense of anxiety among white voters about their standing in a country that is growing more diverse and a politician intent on stoking those worries. I mean, they should be worried. You guys said you wanted them all gone. Honestly, you cannot tell any group of people on the planet that you're going to replace them, that you're going to uh, outbreed them, that you're basically going to displace them from their own countries, and have them not be afraid, have them not feeling anxiety. If it was any other race, Asians, uh, any other minority, they would fight back and not take it lying down. The fact that whites are barely feeling anxiety now just goes to show how compassionate a lot of these people really are, something which almost everyone uses against them. Surveys show fears among some white people that they are losing status in America, which they are. And those holding such views are increasingly aligned with the Republican Party. These voters perceive anti-white discrimination. Because there is! A growing share say the nation risks losing its identity because of openness to foreigners. This has absolutely been proven true in all of history. The fall of Rome was in part because of foreign invasion. Does it sound familiar? And many are concerned about what it will mean when non-Hispanic whites lose majority status, as demographic projections suggest will happen around 2045. A large if not majority share of voters, with a majority of Republicans, say the change will threaten American customs and values, a prospect that they say makes them anxious and even angry. I mean, you're already seeing that happen. So it's, it's a really strange mystery that almost in every Western country where you increase diversity, crime rates go up, but nobody knows why. All of a sudden, there's crime rates in that increase. There's more problems with poverty. Um, there's IQ discrepancies, but nobody seems to know the cause. Everyone covers their eyes, covers their ears, and pretends like nothing is going on. There's no explanation. What could possibly have caused this? But without a politician of the president's stature so vocally exploiting it, political science say, Political scientists say, this lurking sense of white status loss would probably not be such a combustible theme in American politics. Just go back to sleep, guys. Ignore your destruction. Seriously? First of all, political scientists are a joke. It's not real science. Second of all, the sense would only be growing. It's growing everywhere in the world It's having to deal with increasing diversity and progressive bullshit programs. Whites are already being discriminated against in the workplace, they're discriminated against in society, and they're constantly demonized and hated. There is a lot of bigotry and anti-white sentiment against them. Because, in part because of leftists and the Democratic Party, but also because that's just the cultural Marxist narrative that's being pushed. It really takes a Trump to ignite it, said Michael Tesler, a political scientist at the University of California, Irvine. Oh, I'm supposed to take your advice, Mr. Californian leftist professor? Bull crap. This is a growing feeling, and I've seen it all around me, especially as the country continues to degrade. These beliefs, whites are discriminated against, that undeserving minorities are getting more than they deserve, which they are, and hardworking whites are getting less than they deserve, those are always there. Because they're both true! Literally! You have colleges letting in minorities who don't get a high score in the SATs while having high requirements for whites and Asians. That's pure discrimination. That's not meritocracy. Affirmative action 
is anti-meritocracy, it's anti-equality, and it shows that those who don't deserve it are getting promoted. But what Trump really does is he maps them onto politics. That's where they become explosive. Research is beginning to suggest that white voters who have long been politically motivated by their views of other groups may be starting to think of their own group as an explicit identity. In that sense, they appear for the first time in the Trump era to be thinking about themselves in the ways that mirror how minorities have long thought about group identity. In other words, whites are finally finding racial conscious. Every single race on Earth has a sense of identity for their group, except whites. Isn't that strange? Doesn't that make it seem like whites are among the most enlightened of races? And yet they are the most hated. They are the most discriminated against, all because they lack that identity. Well, guess what? The pendulum swings because now you're forcing white people to defend themselves to once again awaken to our differences and embrace their own identities, something that every race on earth has a right to do. If you think otherwise, then you are bigoted. It wasn't a foregone conclusion that American politics would end up here in 2019, with voters chanting to send foreign-born American congresswomen back to Africa. You know, one of those women, I think it's probably committed immigration fraud to come to America, so not only is she not a rightful citizen, um, she sh should in fact be in jail. And I, I watched this clip of one of them talking about it. And Trump said that we should go back to my... It was like a total oof moment, oops. And then she was like, the countries we came from. So even in their own minds, they think of the countries they came from as their countries. Lord has to wonder what they're doing as politicians. A different politician at the top of the Republican Party, one focus say on tax cuts rather than immigrants, might have left these white racial anxieties more dormant or less likely linked with partisanship. So you heard it here first, folks. These people want you all to go to sleep. They want whites to go to sleep, to forget that they're being threatened constantly every single day discriminated against and hated. They just want them to go to sleep and just take it. Just disappear. You'll make everything so much easier for us so we can control everyone. Oh, but apparently it's okay if you do it to Caucasian people. I don't think so. Equal treatment means equal treatment. It means you don't hate people for the color of their skin, whether they're brown, green, blue, or white. That means this moment shouldn't simply be understood as backlash against the country's first black president. You mean the first half white president? Gee, I wonder who's really racist here. Political scientists say, it is also a response to the first president in the modern era to make explicit appeals to white racial anxieties, the central focus of his campaigns. First of all, he doesn't do that. Trump never mentions specifically white people. He doesn't, he says Americans. So if you're implying that Americanism is, is white, whiteness, then you have a serious problem. All of a sudden, these people who have no vehicle to express these attitudes are now being invited to express them, said Lynn Vavrick, a political scientist at UCLA, an occasional upshot contributor and co-author of a book with Tesla and John Sides on the road of racial identity in the 2016 election. Gee, I wonder who's obsessed with race. Because it's not Donald Trump. It seems to be all these leftists can talk about is skin color. Which figures since it was the Democrats who started the Triple K. Not to mention, they were also the Southerners. Trump is a huge element in what's going on. He's insufficient, but he's necessary. The voters are not sufficient, but they're necessary. The evidence that racial attitudes now play an important role in vote choice among white voters is overwhelming. This is all the result of identity politics. You leftists created this. It has been replicated in study after study, and just about every major survey in political science over the last over the last decade if you wanted to know whether white barack obama voters would support trump in 2016 you're better off knowing their demographics and answers to questions about race than knowing their political ideology like whether they consider themselves conservative you're better off knowing their attitudes about race and whether they were anxious about their current economic situation whether they had a college degree or their age or gender Many white Americans have long held what political scientists call conservative racial views, like believing that African Americans struggle to get ahead because they don't work hard enough. This is completely true, buddy. Rather than because of discrimination. <laughs> because it's absolutely true. Have you seen the culture? Okay, here's the deal with African American culture. It's the same thing in Africa. It's almost a mirror image. One, materialism. They don't care about, uh, like, they're not frugal. They don't want to save money. They just want to have nice things and appear rich. It doesn't matter if you are rich in that culture. It's all about having fancy status symbols. Two, the music culture, and this is a large part due to hip-hop and rap, which has become largely garbage. 
sings about like it glorifies materialism uh lewdness basically not thinking ahead saying f the system f education which brings us to our third point anti-education beliefs people who go to school are seen as uncool people who focus on their studies are seen as acting white it's a completely toxic behavior and just like in africa it would seem that these communities pull each other down so one example is if, if you go to an african country and there's one african who is maybe a little bit smarter than his his surrounding people People, his neighbors and he decides to start a chicken farming business and it's working and he's making a profit he's a capitalist he's improving the economy he might actually get somewhere well what happens his family shows up their uh, the relatives show up and they're like you have chickens why don't you give us chicken it's your duty we're family after all so he's like maybe you're right i could give you one chicken but then they ask for more and more and before you know it there's no more chickens the business dies that's african culture in a nutshell it's common in the united states it's part of why they just can't seem to get ahead. They drag each other down. It's a very toxic culture. But these attitudes were often latent in electoral politics. Says the left, you talk about it every day. More than a decade ago, a majority of less educated white voters did not perceive a major difference between the two parties on racial issues, according to Tesla's research, and most campaigns weren't overtly trying to disabuse them of that notion. Now some white voters, especially less educated ones, you see how they look down on you? Like you're some sort of dumb animal? Seriously, um, every time these freaking smug liberal leftists and these Democrats are like, You're just not educated. You're not smart like me. Look at me. Look at, look at California, this glorious country. Yes, it's kind of third world. Yes, uh, the, the streets are contaminated. Yes, we are in massive debt. Yes, uh, we can't support the economy. Yes, taxes are high. And yes, people are fleeing the state. But you know what? We're on the right side of history. See a bigger difference between the two parties on racial issues. They saw Trump as far more conservative on immigration. They believed Hillary Clinton was much likelier than Trump to support increase in aid to African Americans. They thought that of John Kerry and Obama too, but not nearly as much. In this environment, polls show that substantial number of white voters believe they face discrimination. They appear to be concerned that employers and schools may give preference to non-white candidates. They don't understand why cultural norms encourage non-white racial groups, but not white people, to openly identify with and celebrate the race. They might even resent that there is no White History Month, something that 29% of whites say they support. To the extent that these views make some white voters angry, that reaction is a potent force in politics. And anger is more effectively leveraged among white voters than other groups, he argues, pointing to the cultural stigma in America against public expressions of anger by African Americans and other minorities, and even by the first black president. Trump's claim that four minority congressmen should leave America rather than critique it is in effect a version of that too. So Trump never said they should leave. Trump said that they should go back to the countries they came from, fix those countries, and then return to the United States to show us how it's done. It was a challenge to put their money where their mouth is. So you're lying, the mainstream media lied, and this is exactly why whites are becoming awake. Because you keep demonizing whiteness, you keep demonizing white people, and you keep telling them, your time is over, we're going to replace you, I cannot wait until you're all gone. Tell that to anyone, any race on earth, and they will be afraid, and they will be ready to band together and resist your tyranny and delusion. Needless to say, this article is accidentally red-pilled, and I hope it wakes up a lot of people. But that's merely the obvious. Well, that's all for now, folks. How do you feel about white anxiety and fears as the world grows increasingly diverse, despite the fact that whites are in fact a global minority? How do you feel about the fact that they truly believe that this is Trump's fault and not the fault of the leftists who keep pushing to get rid of people they don't like, demonizing an entire race of people. Be sure to let me know. Now, just a reminder, you can join me on Patreon or Subscribe Store for as low as one dollar. Doing so will get you access to Fight Club, a private Discord server. There's also PayPal options. Be sure to check out my affiliate links in the description. Protect yourself from hackers and spies. Swagnet is currently selling magnetic MacBook Pro covers that you can use to cover your cameras. There's even a Nyoncat version. Lastly, because websites are no longer promoting red-pilled content, you can help out by sharing this video on social media. As always, thanks for watching. This has been Mr. Obvious, and I'll see you all next time.